Whiskey Cast. Proudly brought to you by Redbreast, the definitive single pot still Irish whiskey. Join the still house at singlepotstill.com and receive an exclusive whiskey tasting journal. Whiskey inspires passion. What else would make successful people give up their careers to start at the bottom of the barrel, literally? John Cooper and Herman Mihalik did just that. They gave up the corporate world to make whiskey. Dad's hat, Pennsylvania rye whiskey. I was in the technology business for about 35 years. Herman was in the chemical industry for about 35 years. Uh, the two of us met at the University of Pennsylvania. Uh, we were fraternity brothers back in the 70s. And uh, we were both home brewers over the years. We remained close friends uh, post-graduation. And uh, we always had a fascination with uh, microbrewing and with distilling. They were inspired by a 2006 New York Times article on craft distilling. It took a few years to turn that inspiration into reality, though. Dad's hat finally went on sale in 2012 and is now available in 12 U.S. states. They have an advantage over other distilling newcomers, though. They're not really newcomers. Well, I'm a chemical engineer by training. Uh, my eighth grade science project was a still. And uh, there's a few members of my family have been known to uh, operate their stills uh, back uh, uh, years ago. Back in the day, long before Kentucky became the whiskey capital of the U.S., Pennsylvania's rise dominated the whiskey business. Part of the goal behind Dad's hat was to revive some of that tradition. We're very proud of the fact that uh, our bottles uh, come from Anchor Hocking, uh, just outside of Pittsburgh in a small town of Manaka, PA. So our rye grain comes from Pennsylvania, uh, predominantly from Bucks County, but we also get it from York, Lancaster, Chester, and Montgomery County. So all of our rye grain comes from Pennsylvania. Our bottles come from Pennsylvania. Our labels are printed in Pennsylvania, applied in Pennsylvania. And uh, we do everything here on site uh, from uh, grinding our own grain uh, to fermentation to distillation to barrel aging to bottling all right here in this one room. That room is in the old Grundy Mill on the banks of the Delaware River in Bristol, about 20 miles north of Philadelphia. The mill has been turned into a small industry incubator. In fact, Dad's Hat gets its labels printed and applied by one of their neighbors in the mill. And while John Cooper and Herman Mihalik are proud of their Pennsylvania roots, their whiskey also has its roots in another manufacturing state, Michigan. Michigan State, uh, in their engineering department, actually does some research uh, into uh, distilling and has a, a smaller version of our actual still at Michigan State. Uh, they also offer an education program with regards to the entire distilling process. Uh, we got involved with them by actually shipping two tons of rye grain from here in Pennsylvania. We took Pennsylvania grain, shipped it to Michigan, went up there, worked with their department, uh, learned the entire process of how to distill, uh, worked with their actual still, which is a smaller version of the one we had. We did some uh, testing on different sized barrels for aging, and we began our actual process at Michigan State. Herman does most of the distilling, using a German-made still that combines the best of pot stills and column stills. We have a pot still, then, and we've uh, we, uh, selected a side column, which gives us the option of running through the column or bypassing it. Uh, and we're able to use it in a way where we can use this still for stripping, we can do uh, traditional pot stilling, or if we want to use the side column to, to make a cleaner spirit, we can do that as well. So it gives us a lot of versatility uh, and it enables us to really tailor the spirit we're making for precisely the, the vinyl product we're, uh, we're shooting for. They're using a combination of 15-gallon barrels and standard size 53-gallon barrels to mature their whiskey. The big barrels will be ready in late 2014 with straight rye whiskey, which requires at least two years of aging. The 15-gallon barrels meet the requirement to get whiskey on the market now while not sacrificing quality. Small barrel aged whiskey can be very, very good whiskey, of which our whiskey is good whiskey. The difference is, is it's going to be different than what you're going to get out of a 53 gallon barrel. Um, actually, what you have to do is you have to start that process way up front when you're actually going through the distillation process. Because you take a smaller or a narrower cut from the still, 
when you're going to put it in a 15 gallon barrel than you will when you're going to put it in a 53 gallon barrel. So the amount of tails that you take off the back end of the distillation process varies based on the size barrel that you're going to use. By taking a narrower cut on the tails, by managing and, and monitoring our 15 gallon barrels, we get an exceptional yield. They've also released a unique vermouth cask finished dry using casks that once held California made via vermouth. When you talk to cocktail people, they'll tell you that, you know, when you use something like a vermouth or a bitters, the idea is to kind of fill in gaps along the flavor profile. And our rye whiskey, because it's fairly young, is very sprite and very spicy, but it doesn't have some of those low, those, those sort of lower, rounder uh, notes. And this does a really nice job of providing that sort of round, uh, not, I wouldn't call it sweet, but sort of those round, uh, warm spices in the background. Uh, and so that married to that, the brightness and the spiciness of the rye just seems to be a really nice, uh, nice match. By the way, the dad's hat name is another nod to tradition. I do wear my dad's hats. When my dad passed away uh, several years ago, I inherited a whole slew of fedora hats. And as you can see, I'm a little challenged on top, so it's uh, convenient to have hats. And I really enjoy wearing those, those beautiful fedoras. And um, so we were meeting with our communications company, Signature Communications in Philadelphia, and they came up with the idea of using this backstory, which is a nice backstory about the hats, but also, more importantly, having the fedora hat as a uh, symbol. Herman's dad may well be keeping an eye out for them. Dad's hat is already profitable after its first year, but Herman and John are using the skills they learned in 35 years of corporate work to make sure it stays that way. Our methodology is slow and steady. Uh, we're working hard to make sure that we're in constant supply for our, for our customers. Uh, we're not trying to grow so fast that we outstrip our supply or our capacities. For more cask strength conversation on whiskeys with the people who make them and the people who drink them, join us each week for Whiskey Cast. In Bristol, Pennsylvania, I'm Mark Gillespie.